podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our, I don't even know what day it is, Tuesday webinar. Uh, my name is Daniel Morris. I've also got Charlie Lawford on the line. We're both from Lenovo in our software defined, Hi, software defined team. And today we're here to talk about uh, hybrid cloud and edge. Now, I know some people will be rolling through, but we'll, we'll kick off because we've got, we've got an hour. Um, we're using, obviously, uh, GoWebinar as our platform for today. You'll see down the bottom there, there's a, um, a little Q&A box. So if you've got any questions as we go along, uh, as Charlie and I talk, both of us will be answering questions as we go. Uh, just so you know, if you hang around till the end, we'll send you out a Lenovo smart bulb to say thank you for, for attending and giving up your important time. And as if you saw a tweet I just sent out then, right now Australia's playing Argentina in the Olympics in basketball. And... I'm, I'm here with you today. This is how important this is for me, right? <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll kick off into it. So if you've, if you've been on one of our webinars before, you've seen this slide, but for those who aren't familiar, Lenovo is, is, is made up of a, of a couple of components and uh, we're in the ISG team, the Infrastructure Solutions Group team. It used to be called DCG. And then we've got our PC and uh, workstations division and it's called IDG. And then finally, we've got a, uh, services division now called SSG. Now this is a this is a new uh, I guess layout and alignment across the business. And what it is is this idea of one Lenovo, where the two businesses are coming together, working together more, in particular around services um, uh, solutions and our support. All right. So what we'll see is the scale that we get from that part of the business. We're now going to be using a lot more of their ISG business. And today this webinar it's important to start with this because. A lot of the solutions we're going to start to do are, are around edge, are around IoT, are around managing multiple devices at scale. And so as we get closer to both sides of the business, the better it is for our customers and our partners. Now, scene setting, hopefully everyone on the webinar is aware of, of these vendors, but when we talk, when Lenovo talks about HCI, it's these three vendors, Nutanix, VMware, and Microsoft. So with Nutanix, it's HX, with VMware, it's VX, and Microsoft, it's MX. So why is Nutanix HX and not NX? Because Nutanix have their own product called NX. So we, we call it hyperconverge. And then the other ones obviously follow. And then on the, on the right there, we've got our Think Agile X, SXM uh, platform, which is actually a turnkey uh, Azure appliance that goes into your data center. Now, we've been on this HCI journey for quite a while now. So uh, 2011 is when Nutanix first brought their first HCI solution to market. Uh, VSAN has been around, I think, since about 2013. Um, and also, and, and uh, S2D, which is Microsoft's um, HCI platform, has also been around since since around about the same time. So HCI now is is everywhere. It's pervasive, right? It's like everyone's got a mobile phone. And so we, we've all started with this conversation on the left there, which is this modernize, like consolidation of EDI, um, collapsing workloads onto the similar pr uh, platforms and then using software to move forward. But where we're seeing the industry move now is into this evolve and then finally expand where evolve now the applications are changing, DevOps is becoming more important. We need software to find networking. We need security baked into the platform and we need to be able to manage at scale. And with the expand piece is now how do we take advantage of this hybrid cloud story that we've been talking about for a few years where everything is now software defined. How, how can we make it easily plug into the various clouds and strategies that people have got out there without creating a whole bunch of um, silos in, in the environment, which is so it's sort of, it's, you know, you know, it's like IT goes, it goes in cycles. And now we're looking at how do we, how do we go from individual data centers to, to now disparate workloads at the edge or wherever else and, and but still manage it uh, holistically. Now, just a bit of a plug for Charlie and myself. We have a YouTube channel here called Think Expert. If you just do a search for it, you, you'll find it. Um, We've done webinars like this before. This one is a bit different. We're focusing primarily on edge and uh, and a, uh, a, an idea that Charlie's come up with the stores as a service. So if you want to go through how some of the platforms go through and connect into the various clouds, we've got some other webinars up there that you can you can leverage. So edge of the service, what does it mean? Why do we keep talking about edge? Because it's becoming um, uh, a real thing in our environment, especially here in Australia, because we're so disparate and obviously COVID and skill sets, people are moving around the country. I live here in Brisbane and uh, the amount of people moving up here from other parts of the country is insane. And they're all up here going, oh, well, where will I work? What sort of business will I be in? The answer is it doesn't really matter now. They can do their jobs remotely. And so um, 
you can see why is edge important. So reduce requirement on net, network infrastructure. So especially from a um, you know from a comms perspective, right? So uh, VMware, for example, have got this thing called Velo Cloud, which is SD WAN. Uh, trying to leverage MBN instead of maybe like the, the, the old networks they've got. It's modernizing uh, that, that side of it and also putting the compute where the workloads are. You can see there faster insight with the available data. So reading license plates, you know, we've got, we've got um, this capability inside uh, police cars, inside cameras at the source. And then, then you see on the right there, deliver a better service. So we're becoming more and more dependent on Google Maps, all these other bits and pieces that we just take take for granted. I was in an Uber a couple of days ago and uh, the Vodafone network went down and we were stuck. And so he just took me home for free. <laughs> but we, we've become so reliant on some of these technologies. Now, where Lenovo is going at this, where and this is the one Lenovo thing I mentioned before is this, uh, you're going to need devices at the edge, whether they're full blown servers or maybe reduced servers or even just small IoT uh, collectors, right? And so they can be 5G, 4G, and you can see the range here on the right there. Now, the bottom one there is 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 what we call our SE350. Uh, it's we, We've got it certified with a couple of our platforms, but the, the two above it are also connecting in with, with what we're doing with Microsoft around um, Azure Stack Edge and some other platforms where these things are, you know, there's no fans, they can be, they can be racked outside, like I said, 4G, 5G, cableless. Um, you will be able to send them the site and have them deployed remotely. This is this is the new normal, right? We we, we talk about this all the time, but we've got we've got some uh, examples that Charlie will go through in a sec where there are large customers that are actually going through and, and leveraging these solutions at the edge for us now. Now, this is uh, the SE350. So in HX land, it's called a 10 HX1021. In uh, MX, it's called an MX1021. You can see the pattern there. And we've also got we can we can do it with VMware as a, as a VMware ready node. But I've actually got one sitting here. I don't know if you can see this. So this is this is the size of it. And this is what this is what we're deploying HCI solutions out in the field. So this can be mounted on a wall. Whoop, there's my camera. So we can mount it sideways on the wall. You can see here I've got my normal connectivity, but in the back, and you, I haven't got the antennas. I don't know if you can see that, but we actually can connect this via 4G, 5G, and still run our HCI solutions on top of it. So this is. This is where we're seeing a, a massive uptick in, in interest around around these sort of portfolios. So I'll, I'll hand over to Charlie now, and he'll just go through, uh, I guess, the stores of the service, edges of service concept, and, and, what, and what we're doing around the world with some of our customers. Thanks, Charlie. Last one. Thanks, Dan. I, I don't know how many webinars we've, we've done together now. We've spoken about the, uh, the SE350, and that's the first time you finally <laughs> pulled it out of your drawer and, and shown it live. I'm very that, impressed, mate. That, that's because potentially the guy here in Queensland finally gave it back. So, yeah, help <laughs> 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 uh, Very nice. Well, look, thank you. Um, so, look, I think, you know, as I said, we're, Dan and I have done a few of these webinars before, and, uh, you know, there's, you know we're, we're always trying to mix it up you know, talk about new subjects, new topics. Um, you know, a lot of it can be quite product focused. Uh, so I think, you know, this time we really wanted to mix it up and and, and dwell or focus a little bit more on the use cases uh, that we can use some of these solutions. And, you know, Dan talks about the one Lenovo, um, you know, when we start looking at, um, you know, transforming edge and doing, you know, the kind of workloads that we're doing out there, it's really bringing together a lot of the different parts and of, of Lenovo. So, you know, we've had conversations with, uh, you know, the, we, we've got an edge uh, specific BU, we've got an AI lead, we've got a, um, uh, you know, we've got all sorts of different departments that are all contributing to providing these different solutions. And, you know, from those edge devices that, that you know, Dan showed before, uh, you know, some of them are, you know, part of our IDG, portfolio, some of them are part of our ISG portfolio. But when you think about how we bring them together as an overall solution to a customer, um, we're bringing it as a one Lenovo, right? So we, we can we can bring all of these solutions together um, and, and present it as one outcome. Um, so what I wanted to go through here is that, you know, we're having lots of conversations in lots of different places, but one of the specific um, verticals that we're having a lot of conversations at the moment is around retail because retail is going through a huge kind of transformational shift um, by using some of these, uh, you know, edge, um, AI and IoT capabilities uh, to improve their 
um, uh, you know, their, their performance, their profit, their responsiveness. Uh, you know, there's so many benefits that uh, that this particular vertical is is getting out of you know this kind of modernization that we speak to. So, uh, next slide, thanks, mate. Oh, pretty. All right. So when we look at when we so when we look at how um, retail is is transforming, right? There's there's three kind of main areas here around autonomous shopping. So you know, smaller, smaller stores. I mean, you think of um, Amazon and, and what they're doing over in the States, right? It's probably not gonna be too long until we have, uh, you know, checkoutless stores over here, but they're on a, they're on a small scale, right? They're, they're nano scale. Um, you see things like Woolies Metro, for example, extending that out to, you know, smart cameras, oh, sorry, smart cabinets. Um, and obviously, you know, in, in, you know, integrating things like that autonomous checkout. Um, store analytics, right? Store analytics is huge. So a lot of these um, organizations, they've, they've got cameras all over the place that used to be used just for security and CCTV. They're now going, well, how can I use these cameras and, and do a, a layer of AI and analytics over the top of it to, um, to, to, to you know, derive more insight into what's actually happening in our stores? So if we look at things like heat mapping, you know, where, the, where are customers spending their time? Uh, demographics, um, shopper and employee tracking, uh, stock levels, marketing, um, even things like slip and spill detection, right? Th these are all layers of artificial intelligence that are being added to, um, you know, the existing cameras and, and obviously, you know, putting new cameras in, you know, specifically for some of these use cases as well. And then one of the really important ones, and, and the one that's probably driving a lot of this is around loss prevention. So, you know, we're all familiar with going shopping and using using supermarkets and using the self checkout and, you know, putting, you know, putting through an avocado as a potato, as a potato, for example, right? So, you know, these retail stores, these supermarkets are getting a lot more intelligent around how they, how they track a lot of this stuff. Um, and so, you know, when you go to a self checkout, you'll see that there are multiple cameras um, and behind those cameras, there's more and more intelligence and AI going on. Um, you know, you may have noticed recently that when you put a certain fruit or vegetable down on the scanner, um, it's actually going to come up and make a recommendation as to what it thinks it is. That's because the camera is actually looking at that product and saying, hey, this looks like a potato or an onion. Um, here's a quick selection of, of, of what you might be looking for, right? So you can see from these examples, you know, how much, how much it's really transforming um, you know what they're doing. I keep on pressing the down arrow on my screen to go to the next slide, and I keep on picking up it. It's all bad. Mate, can we go to the next slide, please? Yes, mate. Well, I, I wonder how many people you've given ideas to uh, scan a potato as an avocado. <laughs> well, yeah. it's interesting, right? Like we get involved in these discussions, and it's it's amazing how advanced these stores are getting. So, uh, if anything, it's more of a warning than anything else. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, they're, gotcha. getting, they're getting a lot smarter, right? Um, you know, to take it to the extreme, we've, we've been told of, of, of use cases, or we've been told of situations where people will literally load up their trolley and just walk out the front door. Like, how, how do you stop that, right? You, you need intelligence, you need that security. Like, it's, it's all well and good to have CCTV, but unless you have a way of, using AI to, to flag and create a flag to someone in the store physically that time to go and stop it. It's, it's actually really hard. Um, and so we've been working with a lot of the, uh, the, the preeminent vendors in this space, right? And this, is, this speaks to not only the local level, but also at a, at a global level. And I'm gonna go and talk about a specific use case. Um, but two of the leaders in this space are a company called Everseen, who do this, um, you know, loss prevention uh, AI type solution, and obviously NVIDIA, right? And the reason why we're talking about this today is that, you know, to be honest, when we speak to these customers, they'd prefer to have no infrastructure in their stores whatsoever, right? If they could run all of this in the cloud, they probably would, but you know what? They actually can't. And the reason why they can't is because they need, um, they, they need that, that, um, that processing power at the edge. And that processing power is being delivered via, you know, GPUs, right? So when we think about our edge portfolio, our SE 350, our soon to come out our SE 450 and 550 range, uh, haven't seen on much on that yet, but, but it's definitely coming. Um, but it's really around taking our compute platforms, taking our software defined solutions um, and, and partnering up with the likes of NVIDIA and companies like Everseen to deliver these solutions, right? And again, it really speaks to that, that kind of one Lenovo message. Now back to this loss prevention, 
this is the reason why um, uh, a lot of these solutions are being driven in this area is because these, these companies can save so much money, right? If you look at that shrinkage cost to US retailers, over $100 billion in, in, in 2020, right? And, um, and so by integrating these kinds of solutions, the amount of money that these organizations can save is potentially massive, right? So they're all looking at it, the ROI is incredibly fast, right? Um, so, so, so it's got a lot, of, yeah, a lot of credential behind it. So next slide, thanks, mate. I, I heard you press your button there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing it. <laughs> So um, this is one of this is one of the examples. So we, we've actually got it's not a it's not a public reference or case study quite yet, uh, but there is a public case study between Everseen and Nvidia around the largest supermarket in the US, um, which I'll name I'll will remain nameless for the moment, just because we are providing the underlying infrastructure to this solution. We're talking over three thousand stores. Uh, we've integrated our um, our Think System platform around, you know, our One U server um, and our SE350 with the uh, NVIDIA T4 um, and the Everseen platform, right? And we're delivering that AI analytics and intelligence um, at those self-checkouts, right? So there's a couple of cameras, um, you know, and we're supporting, you know, a single T4 can support up to 10 lanes or 20 camera feeds, right? So this is something that we are doing at scale. We're delivering today. And we're having a lot of conversations here locally around, um, you know, repeating this kind of solution and these kinds of outcomes for our local customers. All right, next slide, thanks, mate. Yeah, I think a, a key thing there, right, is that that T4 can go inside that small SC350, right? Yeah, yeah. So interestingly enough, actually, I I, um, I spoke to Nvidia around, you know, what's next for the T4 because. Uh, it's it's been around for a little while, and the response was, well, actually, it's been so successful. Uh, while the rest of the uh, Nvidia chipsets have been updated to the new Ampere chipsets, uh, the T4 is going to continue. There's no direct replacement. And so, one of the things that, as we've been going through and having these discussions with some of some of these customers, is that that continuing story around they don't want to own and manage the infrastructure at the edge. So they come to us and they say, how how can you help us reduce the burden around deploying, managing, and supporting at scale, right? And we're talking thousands and thousands of, of edge locations. And so, you know, we've been working with different parts of our business. So our services business, our delivery business, our managed services team, um, and our true scale, you know, finance team. And we've come up with a, um, uh, basically a, 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 an edge life cycle service, right? So edge as a service. Um, uh, and so what we've done is we've thought about what that full life cycle involves and, and we've, we've basically got this solution. And, um, you know, there is a, this is not just kind of slideware, right? There's full scope of works that sits behind this. We've done, you know, pricing and, and, and solutioning around how we would go about delivering this, right? So. If we think about what that life cycle looks like, um, you know, we're going to do staging and imaging, right? It's really important that uh, we have somewhere where we can land this equipment, we can deploy the specific image so that once we get the hardware out to site, um, you know, it's literally a matter of plugging it into power and network, and then we can configure the rest of it and, and manage it remotely, right? Delivery and deployment, again, super important. And, it, you know, we're not necessarily just talking Metro here, right? This is not as simple as just delivering to, uh, you know, a couple of places in the CBD. We're talking some very remote locations, right? So that needs to be, um, you know, planned and, and, and um, you know, and, and orchestrated. Um, and then importantly, we're going to deliver a managed service, right? So um, if you think about the, the, the requirements around, um, you know, monitoring the platform, monitoring for health, monitoring alerts, um, and then importantly, doing things like updates, so firmware and software updates, um, so that the customer doesn't have to worry about uh, making sure that that platform is, is up to date. They can worry about the applications and, and the outcome. Right, over on top of that, we need to make sure that we're delivering, um, you know, someone that can manage this process end to end, so a technical account manager or a customer success manager. And then we're gonna wrap that up in our Lenovo Premier Support, um, who are gonna, you know, manage all of the cases and log tickets and, and do hardware replacement. Um, and then even, you know, the end of the life cycle, we're talking about asset collection, recycling and, and, and refreshing the infrastructure. 
right? And moving on to the next, you know, three, four or five years. So, you know, this is just an example. It's a, it's a high level overview of some of the things that we're thinking about um, how we can, you know, deliver comprehensive one Lenovo solutions to our customers, right? And a lot of this started out from these retail discussions. Uh, but if you think about it, um, there are lots and lots of use cases around, you know, different edge scenarios that this can fit into. All right, next one, thanks, mate. All right, and so, so you know, some of those other UK use cases, right? Manufacturing, um, hospitality, uh, you know, you can think about why, you know, something like an SE350 is going to make a lot of sense in manufacturing, right? It's going to give you that, that um, you know, that GPU processing for, for, for that AI, um, IoT capability, but also temperature tolerance and variation, you know, sensitivity to vibration, that kind of thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot, lot to be said around having the right, you know, product portfolio and the right solution to fit into these different use cases. Um, and then hospitality, right? So again, uh, you know, not necessarily having the right environmentals to put your traditional server infrastructure into. Right. Again, the SE350, HX1021, MX1021 fits really well into that. Um, and then finally, delivering robo at scale is actually another use case that we've got based out of, based out of the US, uh, where we've delivered over 4,000 remote sites on our Think Agile, uh, sorry, 1,000 uh, sites for our Think Agile VX solution, over 4,000 nodes, right? And when you think about you know, delivering these kinds of solutions, it's not only the delivery, but it's the, it's the management at scale. It's how do you deploy, um, how do you automate, how do you monitor when you've got such a, you know, such a, such a vast ecosystem. Nice one. No, thanks. Thanks, Charlie. I think that, that's, that's the key thing, right? It's, it, that's a specific use case you've been working, obviously with customers around, but you can sort of see where this whole, this whole story is going is, you know, no matter what industry you're in, these are the challenges that are coming up where, um, I mean, the example I use a lot all the time is I actually don't have a smart house. I've got a couple of devices around the place, but not that much. I still have, I think it's like something like 90 devices on my Wi-Fi, <laughs> right? Now, now you start, because we, we do a thing called, um, we call it DAS device as a service, where we do managed laptops for companies. Where now that's that's actually gone to the next stage where they're doing managed meeting rooms for companies where you've got your meeting room there, but then you've got your teams like Teams or, or Zoom or whatever else, and then the cameras in the room, the microphones, the smart board, the whole lot. And we're, now we're delivering that as a service as well. And because as, as technology becomes more ingrained into our day to day, and when it's not working, it, it's it's really really quite quite obvious. This is this is where we're going as an organisation is how do we take that that pain away and a bit like what Charlie said that life cycle still support and manage manage it and life cycle it so that you can um, get you know get the get the most out of it get the best value out of it it's it's becoming a challenge even for some of the small the smaller schools that we've got around the place where they've got the they, they still are managing a couple of hundred devices I remember going to a school once and, and there was someone there that would just every night plug in every iPad right they had a couple of hundred iPads now it's gotten a bit more advanced from there but this is this is where we see the market going and so that rolls into this one. Some of you may have already seen this before, but this is a solution that we came to market with with Nutanix where we wrap, we wrap up that as a service component with what's called TrueScale, uh, which is our it's our finance as a service model. But we with this, we're wrapping up the, the endpoints, the, the software, and also the Nutanix hardware and just delivering it as a per user per month. Um, so, we last presented on this about, I think, about a month and a half ago. Since then, we've actually gone through and, and sized up and quoted up a few of these now. And the, the the price per user in Australian dollars is pretty good. And what I found out is it's actually can be a lot more flexible than I realised. So we can choose not to have the endpoints. We can choose not to have the Windows licences. Uh, if, if the customer wants to, they can inject some of their services into the mix. So it's not really a fixed configuration. But um, the, the guidance we were given was around about that 50 Sixty dollars US per user per month. Uh, as we've gone through and priced it, it's around about that, depending on the config. It's, it might be. It works out to be, I think, uh, between seventy and eighty dollars Aussie uh, per user per month, which is which is not too bad considering that you get get the end to end portfolio. But this is just one solution. We can do it with VMware, right? So this is the thing. It's it's really it's a construct that wraps around the support and the finance and 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 obviously the integration with our partners. And we can kind of do it with Microsoft at the moment. Microsoft have come to come to market with their own VDI solution, so Azure Virtual 
desktop and also with Windows 365, you might have seen that in the market. Uh, we're, we're going through and looking at incorporating that into the exact same framework where you might be getting your desktops out of the cloud, but you still need the physical device. And then we can help you manage that from, from an outcome. Because then, especially if you're an organization, you've still got M365, right? Our office and the rest. You might be using Dynamics. You might, you might be using some Azure services as well. And so we can actually wrap up support for, or, or end to end. So you can sort of see where this is going. We're getting more and more, um, solution focused as opposed to we're not really talking about the boxes much at all now i say that and charlie's about to talk about the boxes but we'll just ignore that we ignore that part so with true scale it's a it's a managed service you may you might have talked to some of our competitors around their offerings um it's it's a similar co construct it's all backed by by lenovo finance and what you end up with is an outcome so that solution before it's just one number you ring for 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 the entire solution so we're getting a lot of traction with this in the market and um you know, obviously we're biased, we work for Lenovo, we're being told that the way that we can uh, price and structure some of these, we're, we're actually a lot more flexible than some of our competitors. So if you do have something, if you are looking at as a service or, or some sort of consumption model, it, we can do it We can do it with uh, with actually quite small deals as well, which, which we couldn't do before. Now, I'll pass back to Charlie. We'll just go through some of the hardware, hardware bits and pieces. Off you go, Charlie. Thanks, mate. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, look, we, we are in the midst of uh, an upgrade cycle for our SDI portfolio, right, which covers our HX, VX and, and MX products. Um, we are updating all of these to include the latest generation uh, Intel Ice Lake CPUs, which is built on the Whitley platform, right? So as with every kind of generational update, um, you know, we're going to see improvements around performance, capacity. Um, you know, if, if I go through some of the highlights here, right, we can support up to 40 cores per socket. Um, we've got faster memory, so 3200 megahertz, um, and most of our two socket platforms are going to support up to 32 DIMM. So we're talking about four terabytes uh, per box. There's going to be more flexibility and scalability from a drive perspective. Uh, so we're in, introducing mid-bay drives, uh, more, flexibility, more flexibility around the rear drive, bay drives, um, as well as some new drive form factors as well. Um, obviously, PCIe 4 is one of the, is, is the, I guess, the biggest um, step, you know, generational step as part of the, the Ice Lake platform. Um, and what that's really going to do is enable us to, uh, you know, provide more performance and especially around GPUs, right? So GPUs are just becoming more and more prevalent. And so um, these platforms are really designed around uh, delivering flexibility in from, from a GPU perspective. Um, you can see some of the, the support down there, right? We can support up to eight NVIDIA T4 GPUs within our 2U platform, right? Or three of the, the larger double wide 300 watt cards as well. Um, the, the, the onboard uh, networking uh, is moving away from the, the LAN on motherboard and moving to an OCP3 standard, uh, but we're seeing a lot more, uh, I guess, default native 25 gig support, so the, the, the 10 slash 25 gig support. Um, but from a systems management perspective, everything is staying very much the same, right? We've got our onboard systems management um, X Clarity controller, um, which plugs into our X Clarity administrator and then up to the X Clarity orchestrator. Um, so from a from a, a rollout perspective, um, our VX platform uh, has actually launched and is, is shipping, which is fantastic news. Um, ATX will be later this month in August and then MX around mid-September. So just jump into the next slide, mate. Um, so I've, I've got one of these slides for uh, each of the platforms. Look, there's a lot of information here. Um, I, I don't intend to go through every single um, series and every single platform, but I guess the message is around the comprehensiveness of the solutions that we can provide and how we can fit these solutions into every single use case, right? All the way from our, this is our, our HX, our Nutanix series, right? Our 1000 series, um, which we can either do as a 1U or a um, or the SE350 Edge platform, um, really focused around SMB and robo use cases uh, to our mainstream 3000 and 5000 series, Right, it's our compute or storage dense systems. Um, and then we've got a very high performance HX7000 series, which we can do in either two or four socket options. And of course we've got SAP HANA support. Um, uh, what's, what's useful to, 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 to know here in the change between from the last 
um, the last platform is again that GPU support, right? If you look at where we're supporting GPUs, it's everywhere. Previously, we only had one model that supported GPUs. Now, if you want to support GPU in a you know two socket with you know disk dense, um, we can absolutely do that. Um, and that really speaks to I think one of the other the, the main focus around engineering this new platform for us was around the thermals. Um, you know, the last generation really had some thermal restrictions across all of the vendors. Um, but now as we move to this new generation, you know, we've got higher TDP CPUs and we've got more prevalent GPUs, right? And so the, the thermal efficiency has had to improve dramatically. Um, and I'm happy to say that we've done that. Right? We really can support the highest bin CPUs um, with GPUs within the same box, right? So there's a lot more kind of flexibility there. Should jump onto the next slide. Uh, so this is our Think Agile VX platform, um, and again, we've got you know all of the use cases covered from Robo SMB all the way up to very high performance, you know, large scale, um, you know, vSAN and obviously VCF deployments as well. Uh, so the, we've got some different naming conventions here. You'll notice in the um, in the light blue box, we've got the the 7330N and the the 30. 530G series, right? So we've got we've got solutions that are tailored around delivering all NVMe, right? So we can we can do all NVMe across both our one U and our two U boxes, um, uh, and then obviously we've got uh, we've got a GPU dedicated box there as well. I think for me, when I look at this, the messaging really is whether you want one U or whether you want two U, whether you want all NVMe or GPU, uh, we can actually we can support it, right? We could we can mix and match and. and and do what we need depending on on the use case um, and of course we've got our amd um, solution as well right so uh, amd milan chipset which is another pcie 4 chipset um, was actually updated a couple of months ago so it's, it's been out for a little bit longer than the, the new ice lake stuff and next slide finally we have our um, update around our mx platform so um, in the previous generation uh, we were limited to the MX1021 and then our 2U uh, um, MX platform, right? Which we could either do as, you know, three and a half inch or, or two and a half inch drive. So there's some flexibility there, but we didn't have a 1U platform, right? As of middle of September, um, and we can actually start quoting and configuring today, um, we now have the 1U MX platform as well, which is a, a good feather in the bone. All right, so um, next part here, I wanted to take uh, take us through some of the updates and enhancements we're doing around our VX platform. Um, so there's some really, really good, there's a lot of good work going on here. There's been uh, a lot of engineering effort to um, improve our experience around uh, VX. Um, uh, and we've been, we're kind of co-engineering with, uh, with, with VMware. We, while we're already at a, a very high level on the VMware standing, I think the, 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 there's a lot of success in the marketplace um, around uh, Dell and their VX Rail platform. And so there was, uh, you know, Dell have, have always had their VX Rail manager and that SDDC manager capability, which, you know, integrated lifecycle management and improved visibility and, and you know, lots of other aspects to it. Um, what, what we have been doing is, improving our VX experience to get up to that, that kind of VX rail appliance um, uh, capability, right? And so we're well on that journey and we've already released quite a lot of the improvements um, in that space. So um, the first one, um, I might get you to go to the next slide, is around the lifecycle management. So um, uh, VMware obviously have released uh, VLCM, which, is, uh, which was part of the vSAN 7 um, and vSphere 7 updates. Um, and obviously we are integrating into the VLCM platform. So the way that we do that is we take our, our XClarity suite of systems management and we have our XClarity integrator. An XClarity integrator then integrates into the, um, into the VLCM framework. And that allows us to take our best recipe firmwares um, and create that kind of declarative state within VLCM so that we can do that, you know, intelligent cluster aware rolling reboot, you know, one click upgrade process, right? So the message here is that we are fully integrated into the VLCM um, uh, framework and we can do that across our certified nodes and our appliances as well. Next slide, thanks, mate. 
Right. So the next part of our of our upgrades is around our, um, our deployment. Right. So you can see that there's a couple of phases here. Phase one uh, was actually out in around the March timeframe, uh, and phase two we're looking at the end of August. Right. And so what we've what we've developed and we've released is this VX deployer, which is um, really an automated step by step process um, to to help you know, uh, to, to help our customers deploy uh, their VX clusters in a, in, a, in a much more simple way. So um, the way that we do that is we allow for, um, uh, um, we, we allow for the, the detection of VX appliances on a network. Um, so, um, we can validate the hardware, uh, and then we go and we deploy uh, ESX, we can deploy vCenter, and we deploy and set up the vSAM cluster. The other important part of this deployment utility um, is that we can actually um, use it to, an ex to expand a VX, uh, an existing VX cluster, right? So we can, um, uh, we can detect a new node on the network and we can add it into an existing VX cluster. Now that's a capability that we didn't have previously. So it needed to be done using, uh, using the, the, the vCenter framework. Um, as you can see there, there's a you know, phase two, which is um, coming at the end of this month. We're going to be preloading this utility um, on our VX appliances from, from the factory. Um, and it will allow you to also deploy using that VLCM cluster image, right? So you won't need to go and deploy the cluster um, and, then, and then do the VLCM upgrades over the top. Um, and then we're also going to be supporting our two node clusters as well. And then the last piece, is around improved visibility within uh, within vCenter. So next slide, thank you. All right. So advanced monitoring diagnostics. So what we're doing is we're taking all of the information that is present within the Xclarity controller. Right. So things like um, thermals, fan speed. Um, you know where where disks are in 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 the system. What the um, you know what the firmware levels are. We're taking all of this information and this intelligence that we have within X Clarity Controller, and we're actually presenting it into um, uh, into vCenter. Right now, a, a lot of this is the kind of stuff that um, pr probably should have been available for a while, but um, it is now baked in, in into the solution. So you can see that we um, have now this embedded graphical topology view to make things like just identifying a cache or a capacity drive a lot easier, right? So that hardware inventory, CPU, memory, disk, you know, mapping of vSAN logical disks into the physical disk in the server, right? So that you can use an LED light to actually identify which disk is which when you go into the data center, right? So it's really improving that, that kind of monitoring and troubleshooting capability. And then again, in phase two, we've got this, you know, predictive uh, failure alerting. So using our predictive failure analytics, which is built into every box and integrating it into vCenter, right? Um, support for additional VX models, that's obviously the, the Isolate platform um, and thermal data and, and power monitoring as well. So as you can see here, we're putting a lot of time and investment in improving the experience around our VX platform. Um, a lot of this is released today. It's a continuing ongoing piece of work and you'll see more and more improvements coming out as we Nice one, thanks, Charlie. Right, um, I think just just to close out on that. So, <clears throat> where where does all that fit? So, in Charlie mentioned at the beginning. So, uh, VMware has some hi hierarchy when it comes to their hardware providers, and in this appliance tier, which is the top tier, uh, only VxRail has been in there for the last couple of years. And so, this now these updates will now put us into that, I guess, um, exclusive. Tier, uh, tier in, in terms of uh, matching it with VxRail in terms of capabilities, um, which is really for the, for the partners and customers that we've got on on the call. Good news for you because especially as Dell, uh, you know, um, they might argue with me, but I, it seems like in the market is is moving away from VxRail more and more and more. This this will be a, a very good um, replacement for for a lot of the customers out there. Now, when when, when we talk about uh, the VX, this is more for the partners, I guess is. Uh, how we talk about it is if you look at, you would have heard me say this analogy before, but when you look at what, what VxRail is, it's like buying an Android phone on a Samsung from Telstra, right? So VMware will come out with their update and then you need all the elements in the chain to update it to get released to you. 
what we're trying to do with uh, with VLCM and the integration here is it's almost like the Apple experience where you, you've bought the appliance, but you're still getting native vSAN, you're still getting the native updates. We're just supporting the ecosystem. So it's a very it's a very different model from controlling it to uh, working working with VMware. And uh, yeah, we we were named the VMware's partner of the year the last last two years. Um, we're, we're seeing an uptake uptake in uh, in the amount of customers we've got, the solutions that we're providing. We've actually got a full time VMware specialist now um, in, inside Lenovo ANZ. His name is Nick Nilsson. So if you've if you've got some questions, you are unsure about um, where this might fit for your environment, I, I should reach out to us. Uh, put put a note in the questions. We'll get you in touch in touch with Nick. So with Think Agile MX, this is our Microsoft product. It's it's based on Azure Stack HCI, which used to be called Storage Spaces Direct. We won't go into that too much. Microsoft uh, managed to confuse everyone with uh, where, where it sits, but really this is Microsoft's HCI. And Microsoft have an interesting position with this because you can see there on the right, they, they own the cloud, right? They own Azure. And what they're doing is they're baking a lot of Azure into the base product. So it's called um, Azure Stack HCI. When, when, when we deploy our Think Agile MX boxes, there's two ways of consuming it. You can buy a Windows Data Center license and then you get it included. Or there's now uh, a new a new model, which is which will be uh, we think the, the default model going forward, where you're not actually buying the license, you're just buying buying the hardware, and then you're enabling a service, a subscription inside of uh, Azure. And so all you're doing then is paying per call per month. It's around about fourteen dollars Aussie per call per month to to run the environment. That gives you access to all new features, all uh, constant uh, updates. The the OS itself is nowhere near as a bloated as Windows itself. It's a, it's a very it's a very locked down core. So it's there to be a HCI platform as opposed to Windows Data Center, which is like a, I guess a do it all sort of platform. But um, what we're seeing now, I've got a little video, and I've never tried it on this platform. So if it doesn't work, I'll I'll just mime it for you. But um, talking about a thing called Azure Arc, which is um, a framework that Microsoft have created that runs out of Azure that allows you to uh, manage and deploy workloads no matter what the platform. And where Azure Arc is very interesting is I can use it to deploy workloads in Azure or on my MX system, but I can also use it to deploy things like containers on Nutanix and on VMware. So this is this is a different model for that for that hybrid cloud or even multi-cloud mindset where now Arc potentially could be the orchestrator of your environment and then you and then you push your workloads out to whatever environment. And so this is where MX is is uh, well positioned in the market as more and more people are looking to go hybrid, looking to go Azure. Uh, MX sort of slots in nicely. And what what we've been saying to a lot of people, especially in New Zealand, so New Zealand is getting their their own Azure um, data center in the next I think year and a half or two years. So what we're suggesting to to partners and customers is well, if if they if the customer is looking to go to Azure uh, over there at, at some point, why not transition onto MX, do the migrations. Get everything into that into that ecosystem, and then once the once Azure is turned on, you can just basically push those workloads straight up, and then you've got that hybrid uh, that hybrid relationship set up from day one, as opposed to oh hey the cloud's here, and then you do your migration. So you can actually use this time to get yourself ready for for that workload. So you can sort of see we're not we're not against cloud, we're working with the cloud because we we think uh, it's it's inevitable for the workloads that make sense, it makes sense, but for everything else, this is what Charlie's been talking about. With, with the edge, with these workloads, is there's going to be workloads we don't know about pop up. And so we're going to have to, to address those in terms of what we do with the edge and 5G. Uh, and, and then we need to have a symbiotic re relationship with the various clouds. And it all comes back to management, silos, and complexity, especially if you're moving large amounts of data around the place, because as we all know, the clouds will charge you <laughs> to move the data between the clouds. So you can't really even though you've got a multi-cloud strategy, you can't really flip and flop whenever you want to. You need to have a plan. Now, let's see if this video plays and makes next noise. Charlie, just give me a thumbs up if you can hear it, okay? Most companies have an existing portfolio of applications, databases, and server infrastructure that's been growing over the years. Cloud services have caused an explosion of even more resources created in silos across data centers and various cloud providers. Edge scenarios are poised to create an even bigger sprawl. Azure has customer resources running around the world. 
Hundreds of millions of Azure resources are organized, governed, and secured daily by customers using Azure management. Customers have asked us how to bring Azure management to all their entire IT estate. Azure Arc extends Azure's control plane to manage servers and Kubernetes clusters across on-premises, multi-cloud, and edge. This empowers operators to organize, secure, and govern resources anywhere, and developers to safely deploy their applications and Azure data services to any infrastructure. Azure Arc makes it easy to adopt cloud practices on-premises and other clouds, all with central IT guidance and governance from Azure. Welcome to Azure Arc. Mate, that's, uh, that, that frame rate reminded me of my PC when I've got Teams running. Yeah, I had a, feel, <laughs> I had a feeling it'd be crap. Yeah, how do I go next slide? Come on, there we go. So, oh, if, if, if it was terrible, I'll put the link in the chat. We can watch it again. But you get the idea. Is It's a framework, it's a management framework for deploying workloads, right? So, um, now, uh, it, it's, it's actually a paid, paid service inside of Azure, right? So, there are some free elements to it, so you can use it to manage things like servers, your MX workload. But if you want to start deploying stuff in various clouds, there is a cost to it, just so you know. But this leads me on to this thing called CSP. Um, for our partners on, um, on the on the call, they'll be familiar with this. this. A CSP allows you to resell Azure into a company. And so Lenovo has recently become a CSP here in Australia. Uh, we're doing it, this is part of the one Lenovo. We're doing it for both um, the, the IDG and the ISG, so our, our side of business and the laptop side, and we're doing it for all the major clouds. So we're doing it for M365, Dynamics, and obviously for Azure. And how we're doing that is we're enabling our partners to go out and and offer, offer this service out to our customers. And they're doing it via a portal called Lenovo Cloud Marketplace. Now, beautifully, it's called LCM. Now, you heard Charlie talk about LCM. It's a different LCM. So this is and it's not the LCMs, so it's like the, 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 the breakfast bar. This is Lenovo Cloud Marketplace. But effectively, it's a portal that we, we, we make offer uh, to our partners for free to be able to put uh, Azure services and other, and other um, services and products on, onto a marketplace and, and make it available to their customers. So the idea of it is that if you're, let's say you're an end user and you want to get a new laptop for your for for users join the company and they need m365 they need teams they need to be managed they need a device um and they they need azure subscriptions they might need some some uh you know uh the security set up you can go into this marketplace so I'm, I'm mumbling you can go into this marketplace and just basically say deploy or if you're the end user you can go in and say hey i've had four people start in sydney go and give them a device now that, that also works with the infrastructure side of it where you might go in and go, well, I, I, I need a HCI environment, I need it to be an edge environment, two nodes out in whoop whoop. You can go into the portal, uh, say buy, the devices will, will show up. They will link in through through our, our CSP, our, our um, cloud service provider account, and then basically you've got HCI and off you go. And so what you can do with that is take advantage of that subscription mindset for this for the software on prem, but then you get access to services like this, where I might want to I might have a, a, a virtual machine or a container on site, and I want to back it up into straight into Azure. I don't want to have a DR. I want Azure to be my DR. So you you might have a file server where you might only want to have you know a couple of terabytes on premises, and you want to have the rest of it out sitting in Azure, but I want it to look like one big file system to the end user. That's what that's all baked in. We've got the Azure Update Management, where it's it's this constant constant cycling of the software and auto updates. So there's nothing for you to manage there. It also plugs in with X Clarity, like Charlie mentioned before. So it does all the firmware for you as well. Azure Monitor and Azure Security Center are two two things that I think probably most of the organisations that they're on the call probably are, are leveraging in, in some regard, where it's all policy based management. So now when you start again doing all this at scale, you can manage it centrally, and this is why. Lenovo has uh, has joined to be a CSP. So we've got a guy in Sydney, his name's Raj. Uh, again, I'll give you his details if you need it. He is an Azure specialist. He came from Microsoft and he is here to help um, our customers and partners, uh, I guess, navigate and make the most of this environment because there's there are some ways of, of looking at Microsoft licensing through CSP compared to the, I guess, the the way we've done it currently, and there, there are definitely savings and optimizations to be done. And so this is where Raj and, and the team are really specialized. Uh, 
I gotta tell you, I'm not, because the more I find out about it, the more I get confused. So I'm not, I think that means I might be getting old, Charlie. Um, so I guess in terms of next steps, thank you very much. 50 minutes of Charlie and I. Um, we've, I've had one question come there in there from um, from Liz around the true scale and, and can partners sell true scale? Absolutely, partners can sell true scale. Uh, we are a very partner centric organization. You know, we're, we're pretty lean in terms of how many people we have in the sales force. We need our partners to, to go out and propose these solutions. So it, it's actually been uh, designed with the partners in mind. We can we can do things direct, but it's so far we, we, we are not doing that. Now, what we can do in terms of what we spoke about today, any other sort of uh, HCI or VDI, uh, VCF is the most popular at the moment, but it's a VMware Cloud Foundation. Is we, we can do a customized workshop for a group of customers. If you're a partner, we can do it for a group of customers, or if you're a customer that's interested in something, we can tailor it for you. But we have a, a dedicated services team led by Mahesh down in, down in uh, Melbourne where we can take what's the requirement you want to talk about and then we can give you a bit of a deep dive, right? This It's a bit hard to get through it in a webinar like this, but we can go through what problems you've got and what a solution might look like. And then if, if it's interesting, we can go further down the track. And so that's proving to be very useful. So if you are interested, please, let us know again in in, in the chat. Um, we, we're running these a, a couple every week at the moment. Now, in terms of seeing Charlie's and my pretty faces, right? We've got a different couple different ways we've made available during COVID to get in front of us. So I was supposed to be in, in Perth and Adelaide in uh, next week, and now I am in uh, quarantine because uh, my wife uh, went to went to the the school that's the, that's the hot spot here in Brisbane. So I'm now stuck in this little blue room. But um, we've got these these uh, um, different methods to get in touch with Charlie and myself. So we've got we're on Twitter under Think Think Expert, but we've got all these webinars under the, under that Think Expert YouTube channel. So we've got a whole bunch of other uh, content that Charlie's put together. But that's probably the best place to get started and do a search. And then finally, on the left there, um, with Microsoft Teams, we've got a mixture of some customer groups with our H-Expert, which is our Nutanix user group. But we've also got some um, some specialized groups for our channel partners as well. So if you're interested in that, again, please, please reach out to me. So thank you very much. There's no more questions in the chat. Um, I'll leave it open for about three minutes, just in case um, uh, you want to. But again, thank you for hanging around to the end. Uh, um, we'll We'll work with the, the team to get those smart globes out to you. But uh, I really appreciate you being here today. And actually, just to finish on Charlie, turns out I just got a note. I don't know if you saw me smiling halfway through. Uh, Australia doesn't play until 10 o'clock tonight. So I, did, I didn't miss the game. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I'm, I'm, happy days. I am happy, actually. <laughs> well, as long as we win. As long as we win. But, uh, um, yeah, there's no more no more questions there. So thank you, Charlie. Appreciate your help. Thanks, to, thanks everyone. Thanks, for Dan. Today. Good, good we'll job, as you. always. Thanks, everyone, for attending, guys. See you in the next one. Thank you. Yeah. I can't remember how to turn it off. <laughs>